Panelists, I can see from the chat that we're um, we're live now, and it's it's one minute past twelve. So um, let's um, let, let's make a let's make a start. Um, so look, welcome everybody to um, to panelists and everybody who's uh, who's joining us. I'm I'm Ian Rowley from the University of Warwick. It's my absolute pleasure to chair this uh, this lunchtime panel discussion about utopian futures, cities of culture. Um, three of Utopia's member universities are represented on the panel, um, all um, very eminent in the fields of cultural theory um, or the societal impact of the, of the performing arts. Um, I, I've, I've been told that 140 people uh, have registered for this, uh, for, for this event. There's, there's 50 people currently in the, in, in the room, so very, very good to, um, to see you. Um, I won't waffle on too long, but there'll be more... Um, um, to hear the, um, the the main stuff in a in a in a little while. Um, um, look, please, please, if you're if you're here as a as a as a delegate as a participant, as a participant um, the Q and A at the bottom of the screen is is open. Um, we'll all be keeping an eye on that. So if you want to ask a question uh, or make a point, um, I'll be keeping an, an eye on that. And uh, if we've got a little bit of time at the at the end, hopefully there'll be some time for um, for me to put some questions directly to the to the panel. Um, at half an hour, this is sadly a relatively short session, so I'm going to skip any longer introductions to maximise uh, your time and the, the, the panellists' time. Um, so uh, let, let's go straight to I'm going to come to you, Christina, first, if that's okay. So Christina Lindstrom from the University of Gothenburg. Um, you're part of FEST Space, um, which is a network of universities looking at and researching um, urban festivals and the impact that these have on cities um, that their citizens, their people, and uh, and public spaces. Um, of, of course, and I include myself in in this. We've all been disappointed not not to be able to indulge um, in our favourite festivals during uh, 2020 for, for for obvious reasons, and and we hope that many of them will turn next next return next year, or as soon as uh, as uh, as physically and, and healthily possible. But Christina, through through that that project. I mean, have you have you been able to assess yet what the what the full impact is on on festivals and that sector, um, but also on the people that benefit from them um, during 2020 so far? Mm. Thank you, Ian. Um, this is, of course, a very complex and difficult uh, question. And as you can imagine, we started this project uh, about one year before the pandemic. Uh, started and uh, everything turned upside down for us because suddenly we didn't have any events or festivals to investigate basically but now of course we have started to um to try to understand the impact of the pandemic on cultural festival and events in uh, our five cities uh, barcelona Gothenburg, dublin london and uh, glasgow and um some results some preliminary and some observations from the cities are that um, um, despite um, five cities with rather different restrictions, where, for example, Gothenburg, Sweden, which is a rather, has been a rather open society during the pandemic, uh, despite that we see similar patterns when it comes to the shutdown of events and uh, festivals, basically because it's a phenomenon based on that people gather in bigger groups and that's not possible because of the pandemic. Um, what we see in terms of social impact is that humans are social so we suffer from not being able to participate but we also find alternative ways to come together uh, and one interesting observation is that possibly the more locked down the society is the more creative alternative activities and even activism we see in the society. For example, we see more creativity uh, in a city like Barcelona than in, uh, in a city like Gothenburg, because in Gothenburg, we have been able to room around in society as long as we don't gather more than uh, 50, which has been the, the rule until uh, just a few weeks uh, ago. But of course, people are frustrated. What's a bit What's more worrying, I mean, it's worrying to see how people suffer from not being able to come together, but it's also very worrying to see the uh, economic impact. 
since the event, uh, and first of all, industry is a very important economic um, business and factor in most European urban contexts. Um, and it's amazing to see digital and flexible solutions that um, um, festival and events businesses come up with. But we see also that there is an urgent need to develop sustainable business models because many of these um, uh, creative solutions are, are just solutions to survive the pandemic. You don't make any money basically on them. So we are very interested in trying to understand and investigate how a new normal can unfold in the most sustainable way as possible. And that's what we are struggling with right now uh, in the project. Do you think that, um, I mean, we've, we've seen a lot of support happening from every um, European um, government, uh, every, every individual government in Europe in, in supporting um, as best they see, see fit, uh, particular areas of the economy and, and, and saving, saving jobs. And um, I, I think there, there are, uh, you know, reasonable patterns of similarity uh, in, in, in approaches across, mm. the, across the area. Um, it, it, is, is it a feature that uh, in large part in the support given by governments that, uh, that events and festivals and, and that sector um, has, been, has been overlooked, um, possibly because we, we, we underestimate um, the, the, the bigger e uh, economic and social impact of, of mm. these activities. Yeah, it's, it's probably so. And also because um, the pandemic hit so hard on this sector, because basically we can't do nothing if we can't gather a big group of uh, people. But also in, in the case of Sweden, for example, uh, the law has allowed to actually uh, restrict festival ev events uh, whereas, for example, um, uh, shopping malls has been able to, to keep open as, as normal because the law uh, can't restrict. So I guess this is very complicated, but to answer your question, yes, I think it, it's really hard on this uh, sector. Which is, which is um, you know, sh short term is, is a real... Um, is, is, a real, is a real pity. I, I, I was really interested to hear that, that different um, countries in, in this project, um, you, you, you spotted people reacting in, in very different ways. Um, and so, so almost, I, I, don't, I don't want to, um, I don't want to um, uh, misrepresent what you, you, you've said, but you, you can see evidence from, from Barcelona of a formal shutdown, stimulating creativity and, and, and growth in ideas and, and people led um, uh, events and, and, and in other nations, um, um, a more passive and um, an, an accepting approach. I'd, I'd love to hear more about what um, what, what lockdown um, best practice, good events might might look like, and, and whether whether you think um, you can afford any 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 optimism, even that um, that out of the um, the, the darkness mm. of, of, of the restrictions mm. uh, might come some new ideas and and and, and some new voices of, of different communities. Mm. It's definitely interesting to see how you can build uh, power in this um, in this sector, if you like, from the grassroots level. How much creativity that people actually have uh, in order to come together, even though it's not possible to to celebrate uh, cultural festivities or whatever. And um, when I compared Barcelona and Gothenburg, for example, I what I was referring to that if if you are in a society that has that is completely locked down. You can't go out. Then you have examples like uh, uh, you go out on your balcony and you gather with your neighbors and you play instruments and you do uh, cultural activities. But in Sweden, we don't. We we uh, we haven't been. Um, uh, I mean, since we can still go out in nature and gather in parks as long as we are not too many people and it's not organized we can still meet. So what we possibly can ob observe is that that compensates for people not being able to go to a, an organized festival, festival or event. And this is, this is rather interesting. So we need culture and we solve it um, different depending on the restriction of the level of restrictions in society. 
I, I think that's a really interesting idea and, and, and something that, that maybe provides um, a segue to some of our, our questions. Um, a, a word I've heard a lot in, um, in the past five months is, um, is, is authenticity. And it, it, it's intriguing that it, it might take the formal shutdown of, of systems and, and infrastructure um, to, to, to enable people and artists and performers uh, and citizens to um, grab the opportunity to express themselves in a more uh, meaningful and, and authentic way, e even if it doesn't find the, uh, the audience and, and following that, that more formal uh, events and, uh, and festivals might, um, might, 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 might have. So that, that tension between authentic culture and, um, uh, and something which is more top down is something we might, we might now go, go on and explore in the rest of the session. So, can we, can we, I'm sure we'll come back to that. I mean, just, just to um, just just to remind people who are joining us, delegates, that um, well, although if you've tried to use the chat function, that that's that's not operating, but the Q and A function uh, is. So, if somebody would like to make a remark, go to the bottom of your screen. The Q and A function will will come up, and you can speak to the panelists uh, and make points out to each other using the Q and uh, and A. So, it'd be lovely to see what you're what you're thinking. So, so Cecile, could, could, we, could we come on to, to, to you next? And to, I mean, let, let's, let's, let's think about universities um, themselves and, and, and perhaps the role that a university plays or should play in, um, in supporting both culture, um, but also in cultural identity, using its campuses and, and working with the, uh, the, the local community. And, um, um, and, and perhaps just, just to introduce that into the, into the conversation, um, because, because I know that um, these these ma macro, national, and, and global cultural events is something that you've you've looked at in your in your research. But as Coventry prepares um, to host the title of UK City of Culture uh, in uh, in 2021 from from next from next um, May, how valuable are those kinds of initiatives? I mean, such as the City of Culture or the Capital of Culture uh, within the EU, or, or even the kind of Cultural Olympiad those major cultural events that are associated with major um, sporting events and, uh, and, and initiatives. But if, 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 you could, if you could think first about um, and talk to us about the role that universities ourselves play in, uh, in culture. Yes, thank you. Um, so first of all, maybe I'll give a, a little context. So I, I am also, I'm a researcher uh, in, in French and British uh, cultural policies. Um, um, and I am a strong believer of the global. So both looking at the local, the regional and all the levels up to the international level and, and making them work together in, in cultural policy. I don't think that the local can work so well with, without the international and 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 reversely. Um, and um, I am also the head of a master's degree in international projects in culture and tourism, which means that uh, when you asked about universities, I, with my students, as, uh, as, as most of us, I, I can see directly, I've had direct experience of how um, important culture is. Um, to my students who have chosen this field um, of study, but also to the wider student community more generally. And um, so in general, I think universities absolutely need to be embedded in, in their local and regional context, um, as well as, as the international level. Uh, I think both uh, are crucially important. But Thinking about culture, I think it's even more important because I think um, from what I gathered, for instance, from a project that we did with uh, Paris Sergi University, my university working on the international campus, we realized that international students, uh, but also you know, our local and regional students um, had similar expectations towards culture. They wanted more, they wanted uh, more diversity. They were extremely keen to try new things. Um, they were absolutely fine to have some specific um, activities, but also um, share with the local community, because there's something quite interesting uh, in the case of Sergi, which is that we are a city campus, so that the, the campus is, is within the, the city of, of uh, Sergi Pontoise. So for instance, uh, there's a theatre, which is 
for everyone. For Warwick, it's the same, but it's the opposite, isn't it? The, the theater, uh, uh, the art center is, is on campus, although it is widely open to, to the larger uh, local and regional community and serves as, as a cultural hub. Well, in the case of Sergi, what was really interesting was to um, understand how uh, the students wanted to seize the theatre as, as a platform for debate uh, because they, they are going through these very formative years, um, having lots of identity issues and questions, etc., which we all have all our lives, but maybe slightly more at this specific uh, stage. Uh, they were really expecting for, for this theatre or other cultural institutions in contemporary art, for instance, to allow them to reflect and debate on these issues uh, with other age ranges. And also, um, if I may say, outside the, the their average life at university with, uh, you know, uh, professors and teachers and, and courses, where they also engage on these topics. But I think they, they welcomed a, a sort of slightly different uh, place and also engaging with artists. A lot. Uh, you felt that um, all these um, programs which allow students uh, to have a debate and a discussion after the play are extremely successful and I have been lucky enough to take part in, 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 a, in an after play discussion um, at Warwick um, last spring and, and, and I witnessed the same um, keenness to, to, to interact uh, about a, a piece of art rather than just, you know, watch it and go. Um, so I think all these uh, workshops that you can organize, um, all these debates that can be open to the larger community as are extremely precious. Um, in terms of uh, quickly answering about uh, the, the link with, with what you call mega events, so capitals of culture or cultural Olympiads. Um, I am part of a, an international project comparing um, the Olympic Games uh, and their cultural program in, in Athens in 2004, in London in 2012, and um, coming up Paris in 2024. And we've been looking at um, two things. First of all, the, the heritage dimension. And as with students, creation is extremely important, but heritage is also um, essential to allow people to ground themselves in, in the locality. And it's still a very dynamic notion that if you manage um, participative programs around heritage, people will interact and will express what they value in, in, in the heritage of, of their neighborhoods. And I think this can be actually very interestingly communicated to the rest of the world. And it makes for an event that rather than being uh, standardized is actually very much about the local. And again, you see the link between the local and the global. And I, I don't see why people would go to the, you know, to the other side of the world just for uh, a sporting event. Maybe I'm not too <laughs> sporty enough for that. But still, I, I truly believe that, you know, um, the, the, the the Olympic Games should be about more than just sporting competition and and um, and that people can can come for sporting events, but also enjoy other things. Um, for capital uh, European capitals of culture, it's interesting too how the the shift has been towards engagement, more engagement, more consultation on what people expected locally, uh, and and um, if you look at Liverpool um, in two thousand and eight, which you know, was a success in terms of, of the arts and creation probably, but could have been a bit more, you know, engaging for the local communities, especially the ones outside the city centre. Well, you see, you can see how Marseille really um, tried to, to learn from this experience. And similarly in the Olympic Games, we tried to learn from, from one game to, to the next. And um, from what I know about uh, Coventry City of Culture, I think it's looking extremely um, exciting and inclusive and, and fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to being around actually next uh, summer for it. Thanks, 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 Cecil. Um, let, let's. I mean, I think I think that's that's a great introduction to um, to Jonathan, who of course is the academic lead for research and for um, evaluation for the for the Coventry City of Culture for, for, for next year. Jonathan, can you can you build on um, 
on what Cecile was um, was, was, was saying there um, about um, and, and perhaps how Coventry and Coventry City culture is is, is hoping to um, express itself through the opportunity of being uh, the UK city of culture. Um, but but also from from your wearing your uh, your official hat, your 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 research hat. What what does that mean in terms of um, measurement and what are you put in place to measure um, what success looks like for a cultural event? And um, just just whilst you've got some thinking time there, um, good good to see a few questions now in the um, yeah. in, in the Q and A. Um, there there are um, the, the, the panelists will will try and. Um, and pick up on these, I and mean, indeed, well, after, after Jonathan spoke, we'll, we'll try and um, maybe put a, a couple of these. But there's there's clearly a lot of interest in um, in the impact that COVID has had on the opportunity for our students, both domestic um, and internationally, to experience um, culture, not just on, on campus in the um, um, but in their local community. So, if people would like to answer as well as uh, to question how um, how our own universities have responded to that challenge, um, that would be interesting to share ideas through that as well. Uh, but, but Jonathan, on, on, on Coventry City of Culture. So I can certainly build on um, Cecile's exciting, inclusive and fun. That's exactly what it's going to be. I'm not, I'm not going to focus on the effects of, of, of the pandemic on the City of Culture. I mean, it's been an absolute struggle, as you can imagine, and caused all sorts of thinking. But, you know, we all, Christina, want to be back in that place. Culture is about togetherness. You know, there's no question about it. That's why we seek it, because we seek togetherness. So we're, you know, fingers crossed that there will be a huge element of togetherness in what we're able to do next year. But just to put Ian's question in some kind of context, I think there is increasing interest in the UK around how culture can contribute to a broad range of place-based outcomes. And these would include increases in civic pride, visitors and tourism, health and well-being, tackling inequalities and social cohesion. What is the contribution that culture can make to these, you know, these larger picture, if you like? both cultural but also so social outcomes. And I think there is also um, <clears throat> a drive to be more inclusive in terms of both what counts as culture, and I love Ian's authentic culture. I'm absolutely going to steal that. That's, 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 that's a brilliant way of thinking. You're welcome. It. So culture, so we view culture now as being more than the traditional arts, and we're seeking to engage wider audiences than those who've historically and currently um, been most engaged with the traditional arts and institution. Partly that's to do with the Warwick Commission in 2015 that showed that the 8% of the population who benefit most from public subsidy in the arts are the whitest, oldest, most educated and wealthiest. So I think that kind of shocked people really. We all pay for the arts in the UK through lottery and through taxation, so we should all benefit. So I think that kind of upset things quite a lot. I think there's also an increasing interest here in how we recognise and measure the social value of the arts and culture and to combine this with any economic assessment made. So for us, you know, we're very fascinated with that. How do we measure social value? How do we quantify it? How do we come up with one figure for the economic value, which includes the social value? But there's also in this country been serious criticism of evaluations of cultural mega events, which tend to overclaim the impact without sufficient evidence and without including seldom heard and dissenting voices in the evaluation. And that's made it more difficult to get money out from the treasury because you just don't trust the evaluations that they're getting. So Coventry City of Culture 21 has followed all these trends. It's based on a theory of change. Um, I was reading my notes and leaving my notes. I should have stuck with them. <laughs> It's based on a, a theory of change. All the programming, all the baselining, all the setting of targets is aligned against a theory of change. The theory of change is a model of planning that we borrow from charities and development organizations who need to know that every penny that's being donated will be effectively used to make an impact on people. So we, we borrowed that. We have a theory of change, which is based on four broad, uh, four broad impact areas and 15 outcomes. And everything is aligned to that. The measurement, the programming, the work with communities, it's all geared to those outcomes so that together we have a strong sense of where it is that we want to move. And these objectives are, you know, they, they, they range from health, as we said, social cohesion, career routes into, into culture, bringing investment into the city, um, hearing those voices that have not been heard before. You know, they're, they're a very kind of broad range, which can't all be achieved by culture, but we believe that culture can make a very strong, um, a very strong contribution to, to that. I think that represents quite a fundamental 
shift in the UK from the way that we've conventionally funded artists and artist organisations. You know, we've tended to fund them to, to do great work, which has its own artistic merit and stands on its own. Whereas now I think we're moving from that time of artistic freedom to a space of artistic responsibility, where what we're doing is funding artists to, you know, to focus their work on an element of social change and be very clear about how they're going to make that contribution and also work with and agree with the people who will be the beneficiaries of that work, what it is that they want, what is the change that they see and what might that look like uh, artistically. So we have a performance monitoring and evaluation strategy, which is publicly available, which shows what our approach is to measuring a theory of change. We also publish quarterly progress reports. We're the first mega event that started doing progress reports 18 months before the actual year so that we can look at all the build up and all the programming that's been involved during that time. All of these documents are publicly available. It's another commitment we made. If we receive this investment in Coventry, then we feel it's our responsibility to use it to learn and to pass that learning on to to other future cities so that you know that's an important part of what we're doing the evaluation is very multifaceted it includes quantitative qualitative qualitative sentiment surveys um, social listening you name it we've tried to put it into the jigsaw of our framework and I think you know our ambition our ambition is to produce the most comprehensive and extensively researched evaluation of any mega event not just here but anywhere and this in turn will shape the evaluations of upcoming mega events in 2022 in the UK, including the Commonwealth Games and the Festival of Britain. So I think, you know, festivals are on a trajectory, their evaluations are on a trajectory, and our opportunity in the West Midlands of, of, of England now is to use these three mega events to build upon each other and get real clarity about how we evaluate a different sense of culture, festivals which have a very different uh, ambition, very different scope uh, to traditional conventional ones. Does that answer your question at all? It, it, it does. It was very thorough. And um, I, I actually, what what um, what I took out of that was not not just that um, Coventry City, of course, has the potential to be different um, and have a different focus than those went before it, but the the model that you're um, playing such a huge part in in, in creating um, could be very influential in providing. Um, economic and social and cultural impact measures that um, that help to shape um, festivals going forward. So that that is that is very, very exciting indeed. Um, great to see people using the, um, the, the Q and A's and great to see thanks particularly to Helen answering answering uh, answering the question that was uh, put to, to me. Um, that's 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 certainly a, a, a relief. Please do um, 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 en engage in the, in those questions. We're very short of time and uh, there's all sorts of ways we could go but can, can I can I just ask one um, final question that will we'll bounce to each each um, each panel member in in, in turn and um, and uh, apologies this, this this isn't something we've, we've we've discussed in the days leading up to the event but it does come out of the the spirit of some of the questions um, of some of the questions asked and um, it, it's the one about our students who who join us for a period of time on a campus wherever we're based and um, participate in, in culture on campus in our in our um, in our communities and and we hope to give an understanding to the identity and the culture of the, the surrounding area. Um, is it fair and is it possible, do we think, for, for those students to be part of forming and changing um, culture um, in our universities and in the areas around us during the short time um, that they're with us, um, or are they just there to soak up and become recipients of the existing culture? Um, can our students change uh, culture, I guess is the question. And Christina, have you, come to you first, which is a bit unfair, I know. Any, any quick thoughts on that? Well, the simple answer is yes. We, uh, my university, as most other universities, they are supposed to be international environments. And that means, I think, like uh, Cecile talked about, it's about being local, but also about being local. So when I have students, when I teach students, for example, I, uh, and I have international students, it's about as much about learning for me as learning for them, I think, about uh, different cultural context so definitely but we have to be careful so we develop uh, inclusive strategies of course thank you great thank you Christina Cecil um, on the same question 
Well, um, yes, de de definitely. I also teach um, international students as part of my main course, which uh, Master 2 is, is fully in English anyway. So um, uh, it's very interesting also to see the differences between areas in the world so that Asian students will, um, you know, bring something different to, to, to the common uh, discussion than um, maybe uh, students coming from Latin America. So that's extremely enriching for everyone. Um, but it still means that we are a bit clearer about who we are locally at the end of these discussions. So it doesn't take out anything from anybody. Um, it's just about sharing and, and finding some common points um, very often, but also finding, you know, differences which we can then e explore and and um so i think it's, it's it's a real pleasure and i just to answer very quickly to assi uh, who who wrote about these erasmus students who stuck in their in you know in in their bedrooms or in their halls of residence i feel for them so much i've been teaching on the zoom for the last two months we, we managed to teach physically in September and October. And we are actually actively preparing the, the field work through Google Maps and videos and you know all the, all the digital uh, sources that we can find so that they have a feel of Paris. And if hopefully we manage to do the field work around Notre Dame and in the center of Paris, they will be so well prepared, they will enjoy it even more. Thank you. And, and Jonathan, very quickly, any thoughts from you? Yes. No, but to go beyond that, uh, you know, we, students don't not need our permission to be shapers and makers of, of their cultural destinies. I mean, they're doing that and they've done it for generations. I think that for me, the issue is uh, a university like Warwick has not always been as place focused as it currently is. And in a poor city like Coventry, university often seen as a fortress of culture. And if you don't have the key, you can't get in and the students are on the inside of that fortress of culture and there's something they've got and something they're accessing that other people don't have. So for me, it's more about engaging students in the community, bringing community voices in, broadening the notion of what culture is, you know, and, and asking a, a wider range of people to be cultural activists and shapers and makers of their cultural destiny. Thanks, Jonathan. And th thank you to Christina and, and Cecile as well. Sadly, we're we're out of time. Um, we, we could have done with and, and filled a, a longer session, but um, hopefully we started a conversation. I'm delighted that, um, that, that delegates have joined in in the, in the, in the Q&A. And uh, as, as we go off for, for lunch, where, wherever in the, in the world we're having our lunch today, um, let, let's hope that the conversations and the thoughts continue. Uh, so thank, thanks for joining us. If you're staying with the Utopia Conference, uh, enjoy the rest of the week. Great to have you on board. Bye, everyone. Thank you.